Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extend script tutorial. I'm going to be going over how to use the built in data browser today. This isn't specific towards After Effects or Premiere, but uh, each program does have its own specific things in the data browser that are different. Um, so basically, if you don't have extend script, if you're using a newer computer, that's totally fine. Some people have said it's in the new visual code, but I'm not entirely sure about that. So uh, essentially, if you need access to the data browser, make sure you load extend script and go to window data browser and if you don't see anything in this window just make sure you're linked up with uh, after effects or premiere whatever app you're using and you should see this stuff displayed if you still don't try restarting um, extend script or try using a different script you basically want to have a script with variables loaded up i have one here with a bunch of ui elements and a whole bunch of other variables and essentially what it's doing is checking out everything in here and loading it up so what is the data browser and what is it used for? Essentially what you want to use it for is to look up commands, functions, and methods that are built in to uh, extend script, After Effects, or whatever program you have linked, and it will give you information about how you can further go in and use them or things that are going to be limiting for you. For example, you might be familiar with the helper object which I've discussed before. If you can go ahead and click on this to see all of the things built into it. Any of these red things are going to be methods or essentially like little functions that you can run within it. You can also load up the object model viewer and the same structure applies in here. All of the red ones are sort of functions that you can apply to the object. Any of the dot dot dots are the properties. So we can say helper object dot app encoding and it's gonna give us CP 1252. Then any of these box looking things, the 3D cubes, these are objects. So this is a date object from when the script was initialized and it will contain all of the things associated with a normal date object like the constructor, the types of math operators we can apply to it, as well as these cool methods that give us things like the day, time, and seconds of our date object. There's also a couple of other data types in here, but I mostly stick to using the built-in properties and the methods for each of these. You can always go in as well and see objects within objects. So like say for example you're in After Effects, you may inside the global app for After Effects object, you'll have sub objects for the projects, objects within that for the compositions, etc, etc. So all of these essentially are extremely useful for you if you're stuck, if you're writing code and you're maybe saying you're writing alerts to test where you're at in the code and you're not getting to it, you can always use this to uh, get live updates of the variables. So anytime you have a question, maybe you're stuck troubleshooting a script and you can't get past a certain point, you know there's a variable that should be working, what you can do if alerts or something else aren't working, at a breakpoint, or you can just look straight in the data browser, find the variable which is going to have one of these cubes next to it, and find out what's wrong with it. Is a property within the variable not right? Is the name incorrect? Is, uh, is it a valid file? There's all sorts of information that you'll find within the data browser, which you can also use in tandem with the object model viewer to better understand things. For example, if you look at the Adobe Premiere uh, objects, you could have maybe a track item object open, and maybe this is causing a problem. You need to know whether or not it's selected. So you could simply go into the object model viewer, find your track item object, and go down to is selected or set selected and make sure that it's set. It's sort of a difficult thing to describe, but when you're troubleshooting, you basically want to either use information that is displayed on screen like an alert to tell you, hey, this data is okay and okay to use and it's going through okay. Or you can also use the data browser. So yeah, anytime you need to see things, you can just open up the object and check out either their enumeration properties, their methods, or their sub objects within it. This will really help you either learn new things that you didn't know were possible because there are things contained in here that aren't even in any scripting guides anywhere. That's actually gonna do it for this tutorial, everyone. I will be doing a video soon on the differences and what my experience has been using Extend Script and Visual Studio for this kind of coding. Um, I'll do more research into seeing how the data browser in that is, if it exists, and we'll make a video on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the data browser. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Leave the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe to be notified of new videos coming out twice a week. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.